Hi all, hope all is well. Now before I start today's video, I want to provide a full disclosure. For this video, I have decided to use ChatGPT to help write the script for it. The main reasoning behind this decision is so that I can communicate these ideas more effectively. I believe it is important to share this information in a way that everyone can understand. Recently, I finished a 14 minute video documenting the previous experiment in solar distillation. I wrote the script myself, edited the video, and then came to a startling conclusion. Something was wrong with the results, and I didn't want to release the video giving false information. So the video was shelved, which was a waste. There is a massive amount of time and energy that goes into producing these videos, and I cannot afford to waste time rewriting and editing videos. Therefore, I have used ChatGPT to help write the following script. I'm not gonna lie, I don't like it any more than you do. And I will most likely be punished by the YouTube algorithms for doing this. But it is a sacrifice I am willing to make. I wanna make us as many of these videos as I can, and I cannot let time constraints stand in my way. From here on out, if I find that having ChatGPT assist in the making of these videos makes the process more efficient while also helping to communicate the process, I will continue to utilize it. The subject is too important to let time stand in my way. It also needs to be said that the information provided is accurate. The results remain the same. And if anything, being able to use ChatGPT to help communicate this process to the world will ultimately be of a benefit to mankind. So here it is, the results from the last couple of weeks of my solar distillation experiments. The results are interesting to say the least. Solar distillation experiment results, unveiling more questions than answers. Today, we embark on a fascinating journey into the world of solar distillation. Over the past couple of weeks, I've been conducting an experiment to compare the fluid extraction rates between a standard solar distillation unit, the control unit, and a variation unit, the charcoal unit. The results are intriguing and raise more questions than answers, making this a perfect topic for further exploration. Let's dive into the details, and along the way, we'll also explore how this process ties into the broader cosmic and natural context. Experiment Overview Start date and time Sunday, June 2nd, 9am End date and time Tuesday, June 11th, 7pm Duration 9 days and 10 hours Methodology I set up two solar distillation units Number one was the standard unit. This is the control unit. This is the conventional setup that I have previously made many videos about. Number two, this is the variation unit, a modified setup designed to potentially enhance extraction rates. The results. Number one, first experiment, nine days and 10 hours. The standard unit, the control unit, extracted approximately 40 millilitres. The variation unit, the charcoal unit, extracted approximately 140 millilitres. This indicated an average daily extraction rate of, for the standard unit, 4.25 millilitres per day. For the variation unit, the charcoal unit, 14.87 millilitres per day. The variation unit showed an extraction rate 3.5 times higher than the standard unit. This is to say that the charcoal unit was producing three and a half times more water, more drinking water, than the standard unit, the control unit. The second experiment was run over four days. And for this, the standard unit extracted approximately 14 to 16 mil over the four days. And the variation unit, the charcoal unit, extracted 30 millilitres. This indicated an average daily extraction rate of, for the standard unit, 
four millilitres per day or 3.75 to four millilitres per day for the variation unit was 7.5 millilitres per day. The variation unit showed an extraction rate of about 1.875 to two times higher than the standard unit. The results are intriguing. Initially, the variation unit seemed to significantly outperform the standard unit. However, in the shorter second experiment, the variation unit's extraction rate was closer to double that of the control. The increasing extract extraction rate over the longer duration raises several questions. The questions are as follows. Why did the extraction rate of the variation unit increase over time? Temperature fluctuations. Were there variations in temperature that affected the efficiency of the variation unit? This is definitely possible. System equilibration. Did the variation unit need time to reach optimal performance? And did I say that word right? Probably not. Material saturation. Did the materials used in the variation unit improve their efficiency over time? Number two, what environmental factors influence the results? Humidity levels. How did changing humidity impact the extraction rates? Solar intensity and duration. Did variations in solar exposure contribute to the increased extraction rates? Number three, are there cumulative effects at play? Heat retention. Did the variation unit retain heat more effectively over time, enhancing its performance? This is definitely possible because it had the charcoal in it. Putting it into cosmic perspective. Now let's take a step back and look at solar distillation from a broader cosmic perspective. Solar distillation is essentially the process of using the sun's energy to evaporate water, leaving contaminants behind, and then condensing the purified vapor. This process is a natural part of the Earth's water cycle, where solar energy drives the evaporation of water from oceans, lakes, and rivers. The vapor then cools and condenses to form clouds, eventually falling back to the Earth as precipitation. By mimicking this natural process, we can harness solar energy to produce clean drinking water. This is particularly relevant in today's world where access to drinking water is a major concern for many communities globally. Understanding and optimizing solar distillation can help address these challenges, providing a sustainable and accessible solution. One of the more exciting aspects of this experiment is the opportunity to engage with you, our viewers. Your suggestions and comments are invaluable as we strive to continually improve this process. For example, some of you might have ideas on different materials to use, ways to increase solar exposure, or methods to better control environmental variables. By incorporating your feedback, we can refine our experiments and move closer to an efficient, reliable solution. This experiment is not just about extracting water more efficiently. It's about solving a critical problem that affects millions of people around the world. Access to clean drinking water is a fundamental human right, yet it remains a challenge in many parts of the world. By understanding and perfecting solar distillation, we can provide a low cost, sustainable method for producing potable water, especially in areas with abundant sunlight but limited water sources. While the experiment provided some clear data, it also opened up a host of new questions. The increasing extraction rate in the variation unit suggests that there may be underlying factors at play that we don't fully understand. Further experimentation is needed to isolate these variables and to determine their exact impact. The next steps. Conduct more controlled experiments, monitoring temperature, humidity, and solar intensity. Repeat shorter trials to observe consistent trends. Experiment with different materials and configurations in the variation unit. 
If you enjoyed this deep dive into solar distillation, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And unfortunately, that's all the time there is for today's video. Um, I appreciate all the feedback I can get in regards to this process. Um, obviously, um, I hope um, by utilizing ChatGPT, I've actually made it a little easier to understand. Um, just as an overview, basically, the way the experiments ran was I ran the one set for nine days, 10 hours, and the other one was run for four days. And it was purely to calibrate the system, to get a calibration on it. Um, and what I found was, um, just to make it very straightforward for everyone, was that over the period of four days, um, I was only getting double the yield out of the variation. Whereas if I left the experiment to run longer, um, we didn't get double the rate. We should have had 70 mil in the um, standard unit and 140 mil in the variation that would have equated to exactly the same results as the four day experiment what we found was that we actually received more water over the time period of nine days um, it's as if the extraction rate increased per day so from from um, ratio of one to two um, it went from one is to four basically we we're getting four times by the end of the ninth day we we're getting four times more extraction from the charcoal unit than what we would have if we just let the experiment run for the four days. Uh, it's extremely, um, it, it is extremely confusing. That's all there is to it. Um, for some reason, the variation unit actually increased in yield as the longer we let it run, um, which is counterintuitive too, because um, one of the variations I was going to introduce to the system was to start actually removing the water from it daily so that it didn't get re-evaporated into the system. But from what I can understand now, um, over a period of the nine days and 10 hours, with the yield increasing daily, um, basically what happened was, um, it was an indication that perhaps the water should be left in the larger vessel longer, instead of actually removing it at all. Um, the longer the experiment ran for, the more the yield increased daily. And this is totally counterintuitive. And the only way we're going to find out um, whether we can manipulate these results or actually control the results so we can repeat these results as well so we can see if it does it again is to rerun these experiments um, and then see what the results are in nine days. Um, and yeah, that, that's it for today's video. Thanks again for watching. Cheers. Bye.